So in this video, we're going to take a look at a method that you can use to solve any inequality. Uh, the first step of this method is going to be to solve the equation that corresponds to it. Um, the process that we're going to show is going to be specific to absolute value inequalities, so we're going to look at that specifically here in another minute. But this process works for any inequality that you want to solve. You're going to solve the corresponding equation, meaning you're going to flat out swap out the inequality symbol for an equal sign. Once you get the solution or the solutions to that equation, you're going to plot those on a number line. You are going to have to look back at the original inequality to decide if you need to include the endpoints or leave them open. Uh, and that depends on whether or not you have the, the strict inequality uh, or the inclusive inequality. What that's going to do is that's going to cut the number line up into sections. So we're going to definitely see this in an example in a minute or two. Uh, but when your number line is cut up into sections, you know the places where you've plotted points on the number line make the problem an equality. So the sections of the number line to the left, in between, to the right, the sections of the number line that don't have the points plotted at them are going to make the inequality true, right? Equality and inequality, they're opposites of each other. So if we plot the values that make the equality true, the sections of the number line on the sides or in between them are going to make the equality true. Uh, we're going to shade anything that ends up working after being tested, and then we're going to have to write our solution. That's the weirdest thing about this process, is we actually graph our solution on the number line before we write it. So as long as you remember to do that at the end, this will work for any inequality that you want to solve. You don't have to remember about uh, flipping inequality symbols. If you divide or multiply by a negative, you don't have to worry about any of the specifics of quadratic inequalities. And if it's if it's a greater than if it's an or or an and situation, everything's going to work itself out by going through these steps. So we'll show these steps in this example. So I had this absolute value inequality, absolute value of negative two x minus five greater than eleven. First step solve the corresponding equation. Swap out that inequality symbol for an equal sign. And you do have to know how to solve the equation. So with an absolute value equation, uh, basically whatever is inside the absolute values has to either equal 11 to turn out to have an absolute value of 11, or it has to equal negative 11 to turn out to have an absolute value of 11. So you can find other videos on YouTube about solving absolute value equations, uh, but basically I'm just trying to figure out when what's inside the absolute values is equal to positive 11, and when what's inside the absolute values, negative 2x minus 5, is equal to negative 11. A couple steps to solve this, a couple steps to solve this. I've now solved the corresponding equation. I got negative 8 and 3 as my solutions. Had we done this problem with inequality symbols throughout, we would have had to do three flips of an inequality sign throughout this process. So this method really kind of takes that off the table entirely and hopefully is something that you can adapt to other inequality problems and not just absolute value inequalities. So what I did is I took these solutions, negative 8 and 3, and I plotted them on a number line. So I have negative 8, I have 3. I looked back at the original inequality symbol. I did not see the equal to portion on that greater than sign. So I know I needed to have open circles at both of those spots. These are the spots where the equality is true. So the inequality must be true either on this red section of the number line here, this orange section of the number line here, and or this yellow section of the number line here. So in order to figure out which section or sections ended up working, I had to test. So on this red section of the number line, there are many different values on this section of the number line that I can pick to test with. If one of the values tests in the original inequality and it comes back as a true statement, this whole section of the number line is going to satisfy the inequality. So I chose to use negative 10. Clearly, that's to the left of negative 8 on the number line. And when I put negative 10 in place of this x, I had to multiply it by negative 2, which gave me positive 20. I had to subtract 5 from it, which gave me 15. The absolute value of 15 is 15. Is 15 greater than 11? Yeah, for sure. That 
point that I tested with worked, that means that entire section from where I took that point is going to satisfy the original inequality. So I just kind of shaded that in blue to denote that, hey, this entire stretch of the number line is going to work. I tested a value from the orange section and a value from the yellow section as well. So if we go ahead and think about the value I picked from the orange section, I went with zero. Pick something that's nice and easy to work with. I could have picked negative 5.12793. Uh, that's part of this stretch of the number line, but pick something nice. Pick something that's easy to work with. So I put zero into the original inequality. Two, negative two times zero is zero. Subtract five, you get negative five. Absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5, but positive 5 greater than 11? No way. That gives us a false statement. So you see that I didn't end up shading that section of the number line. I can you know, maybe even oops, have a little bit thicker pen than I want, but I can even X out that portion of the number line. It did not satisfy the inequality. On the other side of 3, again, I have infinitely many values I can pick to choose to test with. Uh, I can go with pi. That's right above 3. I can go with 5 million. I went with something that I thought was going to be easy to do evaluation with. I went with 5. That's definitely on this stretch of the number line. And if I put 5 in place of this x, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, minus 5 is negative 15. Now you do have to remember to take into account the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15, and 15 is greater than 11. So that does work. That means that entire stretch of the number line will work, and that's why I ended up shading that section of the number line too. The weirdest part about this process is that we have the solution to the inequality graphed by breaking up the number line and testing the sections of it, but we don't have the solution to the inequality written yet. So the thing you have to make sure you do if you are using this process is you have to make sure you take a minute at the end after your shading on the number line occurs to write out what your solution is. So I realized everything that was shaded here, all the variables that I shaded here, satisfy the statement of x less than negative 8. Everything that was shaded here satisfied x is greater than 3. I can't be here and here. My shading wasn't sandwiched in between those two points, so I realized that I had to have the word or in between the two parts of that solution. So I can pick a value from this section of the number line, or I can pick a value from this section of the number line if I'm going to satisfy the original inequality. And there's the solution to that problem. The only other thing I want to take a minute to talk about is what can get weird in these problems if you're using this process. So with absolute value inequalities in particular, if you have a situation like this, if the corresponding equation ends up having no solution, like an absolute value cannot equal negative 3. This equation has no solution. That means one of two things about the inequality that corresponds to it. It either also has no solution or it has a whole heck of a lot of solutions. And there are a couple different ways you can build this conclusion. I, I'm going to build it by testing. Uh, so here's the inequality version of this with a greater than symbol in the problem. If I test any value on this number line, there was nothing to break it up, right? The, the equation had no solution. So it's either going to be true that my whole entire number line satisfies the inequality or none of my number line satisfies the inequality. So I took 0 as a test value, put 0 in place of x. 0 plus 4 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 greater than negative 3, for sure. An absolute value is always greater than negative 3. This whole entire stretch of the number line is going to work. Therefore, the solution to this version of the inequality is all real numbers. But check out what happens if we look at the flipped inequality symbol. What if it's the less than version of the problem? If I test 0, I'm still going to get 4 on the left side of this problem, but when it says 4 is less than negative 3, no way, that doesn't work. That means the whole entire number line is not going to work, and that particular inequality is going to have no solution. So if you're using this process with absolute value inequalities, what you have to watch out for is you have to watch out for when the equation has no solution. No values of x make the equality true. That means one of two things about the inequality. Either everything's going to make it true, or nothing's going to make it true. You can do testing, or you can just kind of step back for a minute and think about whether or not the inequality is always true or never true. So hopefully you found this helpful.